In build log number 15, I'll be looking at alternatives to the linear ball bearings, the steel bushings, and the brass nut. I've been using the Hypercube for about four months, been printing cumulatively for hundreds of hours and consumed a few kilograms of filament. In the last month, I've been trying different linear slides for each axis. The benefits of moving from a steel uh, linear slide to a polymer linear slide are uh, they're quieter, they require no lubrication, and they won't damage the rail that they're sliding along. With that, let's take a look at the x-axis. For the x-axis, I'm using anodized aluminium. Therefore, I can't use linear ball bearings with this material as the ball bearings inside uh, here will simply cut a groove out of the soft aluminium. So, as you know, I've been using these steel bushings. And these are self-lubricating steel bushings. Uh, they're quite cheap. They work just great on this aluminium. They haven't left uh, any, any cuts or grooves or they haven't scratched off the aluminium on my Hypercube printing for the last few months. So highly recommend those. And as you know, I used two of these inside, inside this dual bushing holder. So one there and one there. And this dual bushing holder is designed to perfectly align both of those bushings so they don't bind up on the rail. And as, as you can see, it slides very freely on there. Uh, the only downside that I've seen, you know, after printing all this time with these uh, linear bushings is the self-lubricant that's inside here. It's like a, like a, a black oily coating and that uh, over time leaves like a, a black um, lubricant soot over the aluminium, which isn't a bad thing of course because that's what's assisting it in, in moving along the rail, but it just can make it a little bit dirty when, when working with this material and plus at times I think it, it, it doesn't slide as nice as it should uh, so I've been using just a couple of drops of this 3-in-1 uh, oil just to assist the, the dry lubricant um, in, in moving the entire X carriage back and forth along the rails and that seems to work fine as well again the downside of using like a lubricant on here is it's just going to, to mix up with the, with the black uh, coating that's inside this bearing and just make it a little bit messy to work with. An alternative to using the self-lubricating steel bushing is something made out of a different material. In this case, I have a polymer-based bushing. These are Aegis plain sleeve bushings, uh, model number JSM-10-12-10. Uh, they are the same dimensions as a steel bushing in regards to the inner diameter being 10 millimeters, the outer being 12, but the length is only half. The length is only 10, not the full 20. But that's okay. I still only use two of these in the dual bushing holder, just on the extremities. So one there and one there. I purchased these, or they, they come in a pack of eight. I've purchased this from RS Components. So I'm only using four of these. These are the four that I have spare. So I currently have this already set up in the Hypercube and it's working just great, unlike the, the, the lubricant inside the steel bushing here, uh, leaving the black, the black soot on the rail, whatever lubricant this is leaving behind is unnoticeable, unnoticeable at all. So it, it makes it a, a cleaner, I guess, look and, and cleaner to, to maintain the printer as well with using these. And these slide just as easy as the steel bushings. I'm not experiencing any binding uh, when, with using these, even though I'm only using two of these uh, on the outsides of the dual bushing holder. The dual bushing holder is still constraining them and making sure that they are perfectly aligned and that's assisting in maintaining the smooth function of the rail. And just like with the steel bushings, I'm still needing to offset both of these dual bushing holders. So as you can see, I still have uh, a few layers of tape under here. I'm using three little slivers of electrical tape on this side to lift this side out a bit. And I have another three uh, layers of tape under here to lift this side out a bit just to create an offset as the bushings are just a slight bit larger than the diameter of the aluminium uh, therefore by offsetting both of these it's maintaining contact with the rail and removing any slop with the carriage. For the XY joiners on the 8mm steel rods, we've been using the standard LM8UU or preferably the longer version of this, the LM8LUU. So that fits into the newer version of the XY joiner uh, in there and this is the clamp which fits over the top of that. So we have you know, the longer bearing or two of the smaller bearings in here sliding along the 8mm rod. And this, is, this, this works quite good. 
So the drop-in replacement for the LM8UU is again an item from uh, IGIS. This is another Drylan uh, bearing. The part number on this is uh, RJ4JP-01-08. So they, they simply slot in to the XY joiner as well. The problem that I'm having with these though is because they're just made of a plasticky material, they're not as stiff as uh, the, the steel um, housing of the LM8EU steel bearing. So that means if we're going to uh, put any pressure on the outside of this bearing, which we are because we're going to be clamping them uh, over the XY joiner, well that's going to deform the internal diameter, meaning it's not going to slide as nicely on the 8mm steel rod. So here's one that I prepared earlier. Here are two of the uh, I just uh, drop in replacement bearings inside this XY joiner and I've already screwed this down with enough force so the bearings or the XY uh, assembly doesn't rotate on the bearings. So I'll just slide the 8mm rod in over here and you'll see it's stiff and it's sticking a bit. And I haven't even screwed these down to the point where I'm comfortable with using this and that is because I can still slide these bearings through the housing. Look at that. So I need to be able to clamp this down a little bit further, but if I clamp down any further, this is just going to break on the rod and it's not going to be able to move at all. So I haven't been using uh, these uh, IGIS bearings on the XY joiner. I did for a little bit when I was using the older setup, so when I had just the, the, the single bearing inside the XY joiner, I did give these a go, but again, because I couldn't clamp down enough around this bearing, I was still uh, witnessing a bit of twisting on the Y-axis there, so yeah, I can't recommend using these on the uh, XY joiner. However, your mileage may, may vary. On the Z-axis, I'm staying with the linear ball bearings on the rail as they hardly move during a print compared to the X and Y axis. Plus, these polymer bearings have a higher chance to stick than these linear bearings, and we don't want that here, especially when we're asking for only tiny moves such as 0.1 millimeters. The brass nut rotating on the steel lead screw, however, is something we can look at. When the brass nut is unloaded, so there's no weight pushing down on this brass nut, there's a bit of wobble to it, a bit of slop. And that's something, something that I never really liked about this particular setup, but once we do load this brass nut down with weight, such as the entire uh, bed platform, it, uh, gravity is now pushing down on the threads of this brass nut, uh, brass nut onto the lead screw, and that removes any of those wobbles. And that works great, it prints really well. But as we've got a metal to metal contact here, we've got to lubricate this particular setup. And the lubricant that I use is a lithium grease, in this case, WD-40 branded white lithium grease. Pick this up from the local hardware store. A lithium grease is great for metal to metal contact. So it even says on the back of the can, it's great for bearings, hinges and winches and so on. Uh, and another plus for this lithium grease is it's quite viscous. It isn't runny. So once you spray it onto the, the thread of the lead screw, it's just not simply going to run down after, after a few hours. It's going to stick to the lead screw and ensure that your brass nut's going to last a long time on the steel lead screw. But if you didn't want to use a lubricant at all on your lead screw, then you're going to have to use a different material other than a metal rotating on the lead. And in this case, I have one of these guys. This is an anti-backlash nut that I've picked up from MakerStore. It's some kind of plastic. The, the website doesn't tell us what material this is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a drylan type material. Uh, it has a hole going right through it, which is already threaded with the same lead and pitch as the standard uh, lead screws that we have here. So this simply uh, screws over the top of the lead screw, just like that, and then moves just like a brass nut would every time it rotates. The benefit of having this particular design is uh, it doesn't need lubrication because it's not a metal. Uh, and also this particular one being anti-backlash, you see there's this lip up here. We can screw this grub screw down, which puts pressure on the bottom section, lifting up this lip. So we can actually get rid of any of the slop that's on this particular uh, setup as well. Not that it's a big deal in our application on the Z-axis as the bed is loading down the entire assembly, but it's nice to know that you've gotten rid of that slop. And this nut block is a drop-in replacement 
for the uh, nut mount piece. We don't actually need this if you're using this nut block as it already has uh, five millimeter holes to accept M5 screws with a length of at least 15 millimeters. So you use two of them that slides through and that can then grab onto the T-slot nut which is inside the bed platform. So the nut trap is gone. I'm using longer M5 screws to screw directly through the anti-backlash nut block into the 2020 aluminium uh, profile for the bed here. Now normally this nut block will be butting up against the 2020 aluminium but I haven't moved this back yet so I need to move this back 10 millimeters but in the meantime I've just printed out a 10 millimeter block uh, and just used longer M5 screws just so I can switch back and forth between using the, the brass nut and this anti-backlash nut but I'll probably uh, move to this permanently uh, which means I'll just need to move uh, this piece back 10 millimeters. On the Hypercube, using a polymer linear slide instead of a standard steel linear slide are completely optional. I haven't noticed any print quality increases using these polymer slides. Uh, it's purely here to make maintenance a little easier as we don't need to worry about lubrication, which also means it's cleaner to work on as your hands won't get covered in grease.